Hey everyone, welcome to D3 in 10 minutes or less. I'm Jasper and uh, today we're going to focus on data. This is the foundation of all of data visualization as implied in the name. Data, data, data without good data uh, manipulation techniques, good data transformation techniques, you won't be able to get anywhere with data viz. So this is why this is the first lesson, the first, the first true video in the series. Uh, this is where you should start. Uh, if I've pointed you back here from the future, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, this should be quick though. It's a pretty straightforward lesson. Um, so with that, let's uh, let's get into it. So um, what most of us start with, if we're learning D3, uh, we probably have data in Excel or in Google Sheets or something like that. So that's what we'll focus on today is uh, parsing data from an Excel sheet. So you can see right here, I've got a uh, four column data set in Google Sheets, one, two, three, four. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this into Observable. So I had it pasted in there already, but let's just, okay. So raw data, nothing. See, it's nothing, then we'll paste it in press play. Okay. So that's the very start. All right. So we have raw data right there. Um, so with uh, D3, there's a couple of key uh, functions to call to parse through the data and kind of do, do the initial transformations. Uh, so the first thing we, and they have different levels, different sort of tiers of ease, uh, the one that we'll end up with will be the one I recommend. But the first one, if you want to go quick and dirty, you can just do d3.tsv parse. So the reason I'm doing TSV parse is because we're doing this from Excel. And when you paste things in from Excel or sheets or numbers or anything like that, it separates the values with the tab. That's why it's TSV tab separated values. If you're doing this with a CSV, you can just do D3 that's CSV parse. Um, oh, hey, let's uh, raw data. There we go. Boom. Okay, cool. So that's read through it and it's applied. Uh, it's looking at all the values and it's applying the very first header. It's assuming that that's a header. So you can see it has entity, year, actual estimate and projections. So that's great. The only problem is, look, these are all strings. So year is a string, actual estimate is a string, projection is a string, uh, entity being string is fine. So what you can do, this is sort of the next step here, is you can do d3.tsv parse. Let's go. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Big old nope soup there raw data and then you can pass through a second r argument to this that's uh, sort of a row by row what you should do with the data so the first thing is d3.auto type so we're basically telling d3 look at this data and assume uh, try to make assumptions around the, the type of the data this is how we can get d3 which is javascript closer to typescript is we're uh, being a bit more strict with what we think the types are. So auto type is helpful, as you can see here. Uh, year is now a number. Actual dot estimate is a number. Projection is casted as null. That's great. That's a great first step. The only problem is if I want to do anything on a time scale, this is going to pass uh, 1950 as 1950. So that's not quite what we want to do. What we do want to do is this last approach here. So let's go d3 tsv parse. And we'll go raw data. And I promise this isn't cheating. I took these notes before and I know you don't want to watch me just flub around trying to type things correctly. So I'm going to copy this in here and then, and then we'll talk through it really quick. Um, so what we're saying is, okay, so it's still that same first raw data bit. But now we're saying, all right, so we have these four columns, entity, year, actual estimate, and projection. For entity, just cast it the same as. Uh, for year, do a time parse, uh, read it as a year. 
Uh, for actual estimate, convert it to a number, same thing for projection, and I want to add in a new column that's actually actual plus projection uh, because they don't overlap. So I want a year that has all the values. Um, we'll go into the time parse thing in a future a future series, a future episode. I keep calling them series, but it'll just be a future episode. It won't be a whole thing. Um, so this is the same thing as auto type, except now we're being explicit about what types we want there. So let's let's just crack this open and see what the difference is. You can see right off the bat, this cast it as an actual time. Fantastic, great, great, and we've created a summary column. Nice, okay, cool, so we have our data. So what I'll do here is I'll say use data is equal to TSV explicit type data. Boom. Okay. So we're not going to go through how to draw circles today. That again will be a future episode, a uh, very soon future episode. But you can see that we, um, by having the right data, we're actually able to uh, create that summary. So it's one series of lines. We're looking at one metric, not having to kind of pick and point and pick and choose things there. Um, you can see that we have it colored by the different entity, right? So the different series. Um, this is great. Uh, the, the challenge is, I mean, these circles, circles aren't the best way to convey like a, uh, uh, consecutive line, right? <laughs> I guess we should use a line to draw a consecutive line. That's the, the point I was trying to make there. Uh, so what you can do is, and this is actually, this is sort of the next level in data, uh, management or data manipulation, data transformation with D3. So you can use something called D3.group. So what this will do, this will create hierarchical data. So this will be a good sort of introduction to it. We're gonna use this later when we do things with Sankeys and uh, node tree maps and all that. But what I'm saying to do is, uh, let's just do it this way. I'm saying, um, hey D3, look at this data set right here and I want you to group it by this field. So what this will do is, um, oh here, let's just press play and see what happens. So D3 then goes through, sorts this array, which was or originally 450 objects, just stacked one after the other, and it groups them into the three different things. So we can see now high income countries, low income countries, and world. You can see there, it's these same data sets just filtered. Basically, it's a, it's a map filter is what it does on the back end. The back end. Um, okay, cool. So that's great. And then I'm just going to comment out group data. What's happening? Oh, yeah. There we go. Let's just comment out these circles just so you get a better, a better sense of this. So yeah, there's that. All right. So very easy, straightforward. Uh, first one, this one, <laughs> I tried to squeeze this into another class and it was going to be 25 minutes long. So this was under 10 minutes officially. Um, so just as a summary, TSV parse, uh, you can use these row accessors to uh, specify how you want the data structured. Uh, I'll have all the notes in the show notes, in the show notes, and uh, we'll also post this table with an observable or this notebook with an observable. So yeah, if you have questions, feel free to send them in the comments. Uh, if you like this, subscribe. We'll be doing this weekly throughout the year of 2022 and onwards maybe. Um, yeah, if, if, you, if I did something wrong, let me know. Add, add a comment, correct me so that the other people who are watching this can learn from all of us working on this together. Again, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to watch through this and uh, we'll catch you next week.